हेलो एवरी वन होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेल दिस इज अंकित जैन आई वेलकम यू टू ऑल माई चैनल टेक जर्नी विथ अंकित इन टूडेज क्विक टेक वी विल इवेल्युएट हाउ वी कैन क्रिएट अ यूजर कार्ड इन सेल्स फोर्स बाय रेफरिंग द लिंक्ड इन प्रोफाइल पिक्चर इन द सेल्स फोर्स यूजर कार्ड सो इन दिस सेशन बेसिकली वी विल इंटीग्रेट द लिंक्ड इन एंड द सेल्स फोर्स एंड वी विल रिट्राइव द लिंक्ड इन प्रोफाइल फोटो ऑन टू द सेल्स फोर्स यूजर कार्ड so at the end of this quick take we have to go and create a user card which will look something like this here if the user go where the picture will be coming from the linkedin so this profile photo that you will see here it will be coming up from the linkedin and when the user hover over it we are putting these details from the salesforce user object so let's go and see how we can integrate both the salesforce and the linkedin and retrieve the profile photo from the linkedin and put it on the salesforce user card so to do that we have to follow certain steps in the salesforce so the first step here is we have to go and create the application on the linkedin right we have to navigate to the developer.linkedin.com and there we have to go and create the application again i will put all the related urls for this integration in the video description so make sure that you are checking the video description as well another step that we have to do in the salesforce org is we have to go and create the auth provider here for the linkedin in which we have to go and put the consumer's key and the consumer secret key from the step 1 next step that we have to do here is we have to go and create the external credential in this quick take i am not using the legacy name credential but i have decided to go for the new name credential that salesforce have introduced in the very latest release so we will be creating the external credential here and after that we will be creating the name credential as well after creating the external credential and the name credential we will perform the authentication and we will also extend the access to the user with the help of the permission set so these are the few configuration steps that we have to do after that we will make a call to the linkedin api to get the profile picture with the help of apex class that we will again invoke from the lightning web component so let's go and implement this practically by performing each step one by one okay let's get started uh, so the first step that we have to do here is we have to go and create the app on the linkedin for that we will navigate to the developers.linkedin.com and there we will go and create the app so this is the url where you have to navigate and here you have to take the option for create the app so after you have clicked on that button uh, it you will be navigated on the application creation page so here you can go and put the application name let's say i am putting here the application name as linkedin profile application right uh, next thing is you have to make sure that you are selecting the linkedin page again selection of linkedin page is mandatory here in case you folks don't have the linkedin page make sure you can go and create a dummy linkedin page for you i do have my linkedin page with the name take journey with ankit so i am selecting my linkedin page here and make sure that you are selecting the correct linkedin page because a sales uh, linkedin will send you the verification on that page only so i am selecting my page here again privacy policy url you can keep it blank for now you can upload the logo again it's a mandatory thing to do that so here i am uploading my logo take journey with ankit uh next thing is legal agreement you have to accept the legal agreement and take the option create an app once the app is created you have to request for the access this request access basically it will help you to define the different scopes what all different things that you can do with the linkedin api so just click on all these buttons again here as we are using the free version of linkedin we do have the access of limited apis so i am clicking on the request access to request the sign in access and the share on access right you can also request the advertising access in case you want in case you wants to use the open id connect that also you can do okay but for now i am just clicking on this to access for now uh again after providing the access you can again go back to the settings and here you have to go and verify your page so here i go and click on the verification right here one url will be generated if you click on that button copy that url and paste it in the browser here it will ask you for the verification basically here it is verifying that the page and the application that we are creating they both are related or not so here i am making that verification only the admin of that page will get that verification access so make sure that you are creating your own page so uh i have provided the access so click on i am done uh rest thing is now 
after we have created this page we got the client id and the client secret right uh, with this client id and client secret now we will go back to the salesforce and there we go and create the authentication provider so i am navigating now to the step 2 as a part of step 2 we have to go into the salesforce and create the auth provider to do that let's go back to the salesforce here here search for the auth provider or uh, you can search for the auth provider click on the new here from the provider type select the linkedin so here we do have the linkedin so i am selecting the linkedin here again you can give any name here i am giving the name of the auth provider as linkedin auth provider okay you can give any name it's completely up to you in the url prefix again you can keep the same name here uh, next thing is consumer key and the consumer secret consumer key and the consumer secret we have to go and take it from the step one where we have created the application so here you can see we do have the client id which is nothing but the consumer key so i am copying this client id from here and putting it here similarly for the consumer secret this is my client secret so i am copying that client secret from here and putting it here right we only have to do these things salesforce have already provided the authorization url and the uh, token url just make sure that you are selecting that authentication url and the token url whatever the salesforce have provided in case it is not coming up for you i will also put this urls in the video description so you can take it from there uh, rest all we don't have to do anything just go and click on save as soon as you have created the authentication provider you will get the callback url so make sure you are copying this callback url from here and navigating back to the linkedin application in the linkedin application we do have to go to the settings and here we have to go and provide the authentication url sorry the callback url so let me check where is the option for the callback url it is not in the settings it is in the oauth right it is under the auth that we have to go and specify the callback url so this is the option authorize redirect url for your app click on edit and add the callback url that you have copied right basically this callback url is the url where after the successful authentication where uh, the user should navigate it so this is the url where the user will navigate after the successful callback so make sure that you are putting the authorized callback url right so we have completed the step two we have created the authentication provider let's go back to the another step that is step three in the step three we have to you go and create the external credential in this quick take video i am not going for the legacy approach because now the salesforce do recommend that we should use the upgraded approach for the name credential so in case you are also following any legacy approach in your project make sure that you are migrating to the latest approach right so how we can go and create the external credential in our org so for that let's go and back to the salesforce org and here we will search for the name credential so in this name credential we do have the two option name credential and the external credential right uh, previously we used to have this legacy option but salesforce now recommend that we should not go for this legacy approach anymore so we should go for this external credential click on new you can give any name here as a part of label let's say i am giving the name here as linkedin external credential right copy this you can have to also go and put the same name in the name but in the name we don't we cannot put the underscore sorry we cannot put the space so make sure that you are replacing it with underscore as a part of authentication url as we are doing the authentication with the help of oauth 2.0 so select the option here oauth 2.0 keep the flow type as browser only right define the skip the scope as this one and in the authentication provider you have to go and select the linkedin authentication provider and click on save now the next thing that you have to do here is you have to go and add the principal but before we go and add the principal i missed one step in the authentication provider so again let's go back to the authentication provider oh and here i missed to define the scopes right scopes are nothing but what all different apis that we can access so here we have to make sure that we are defining the default scope so from where we can get this scope again we have to navigate back to the linkedin application if you scroll down here let me go and refresh this page 
after the verification salesforce will provide the different scopes for you right so here you have to go and copy all these three different scope like the r email address r light profile and the r member social as we are using the free version of the linkedin here we only have access to this scope for the remaining scopes we have to go and purchase the apis from the linkedin but for now for this demo this free scopes are uh, enough so let's go and copy these scopes one by one so let me go and put here the first scope as r underscore email address and while putting all these scopes we have to just put a space in between them like this right so i have put the three different scopes here and all are separated by a single space so let's go and save this now so our authentication provider is completed our external credential let's go back to the external credential one more time to access the external credential we have to go to the name credential click on this external credential and open this external external credential in the edit mode so we have already created this click on save let's go and open this now here the next step that we have to do here is we have to go and define the principles as well so click on new to define the principle again you can give any parameter name let's say i am giving the name here as linkedin principle okay here in the principle we have to go and define whether the connection that we are doing it's a name principle or it is for the each and every user we are making this connection so i am selecting the option here as name principle so that this principle can be used by any user in our org so i am clicking on save now so i have defined the principles here so our this step is also done maintenance of the external credential let's go back to the slides again now the next step that we have to do here is we have to go and create the name credential right so again let's go back to the org and create the name credential so i'm navigating back to the name credential here and clicking on new here you can give a name to the name credential let's say i am giving the name as linkedin name credential right again i am putting the same name here without the space with the underscores so i am putting here linkedin name credential again in the url now in the url you have to go and use the url or the remote url for the linkedin application for that you can navigate to the documentation in the documentation you will get all those details so i am navigating here to the postman collections to get that url or we can also navigate to the docs as well let's go and check where easily we can find it out uh let's go and explore this authentication so i am opening this authentication code flow let me scroll down so here they have put all the steps that we have discussed as of now right this is for the authorization uh this is for the oauth and uh, it's fine right here if you see here whenever the authentication has been done we have to go and use this url right so i am copying this url from here and putting it in the remote site putting it under name credential again also i will put this link in the video description so that you can take the name credential url from the video description as well right you can also get it from the api that we have to invoke that i will come back in a while so here you have to make sure that you are putting here the api.linkedin.com this is the base url for all the api calls that we make to the linkedin now the next thing we have to do here is we have to make it enable for callouts because we have to make the callouts from our org now here we have to go and select the name external credential that we have created so i am selecting the external credential here rest of the things we have to keep as is and click on save right so our external credential is also ready and our name credential is also ready let me go back to the name credential if you navigate back to the external credential you will see that the external credential is attached to your name credential that we have created now as a part of next step we have to perform the authentication to do that authentication what we have to do here is in the principal section navigate back to the action and here you will get the option of authenticate right once you have set up the name credential once you have set up the external credential you have to come back to the principal and click on authenticate 
so here it will ask you for the email address and the password of your linkedin so make sure you are clicking on signing in here so here it is making this authentication you have to click on allow and you can see that the credentials are authenticated successfully and we are ready to use this api right but again as i said we are using the new way of defining the external credential so we have to also provide the access of this external credential to the users as well for that we have to go back to the another step that is nothing but a creation of the permission set and extend the access of the external credential so let's go and create the permission set now so here i go and search for the permission sets i am in the permission set i will go and create the new permission set here So here I am creating the permission set as LinkedIn access permission set. Okay. So this is the permission set that I am creating. I am clicking on save. Now in this permission set, we have to provide the access of the external credential principle. Let me zoom this. So here you have to go and take this option called external credential principle access. Okay, so if you click on this one, here you have to click on edit and here you have to make sure that you are adding this external credential principle access. So click on add and click on save. Without creating the permission set and providing the external credential access, you will not be able to access the LinkedIn APIs through your Apex call. So make sure that you are doing this step as well. Right. So all the configuration part has been done as a part of configuration. Let me put a quick revision. What all things that we have done. We have created the app on the LinkedIn. We have created the authentication provider. We have created the external credential. We have created the name credential and also we have extended the access of the external credential to the user. Only one thing that is left. Let me quickly go back. I have not assigned this external credential or this permission set to the user. So I will navigate back to the user here and I will assign this external credential to the user. So here I go to the user, click on edit assignment. Let me take out this old access. And this is the one that we have created LinkedIn access permission set. So I am adding this LinkedIn access permission set here and clicking on save. So now I do have this access called LinkedIn access permission set. Let's go and uh, save this. Yeah, we have already done. So all the configuration steps has been done. Now the next thing that we have to do here is we have to go and create an Apex class. From the Apex class, we will make an API call to the LinkedIn uh, where we will get the profile image. To make that API call from the Apex, we will be using this API. This API is the profile picture API. This API, it will return you the email address. Sorry, this API will return you the URL address of your image. So what you have to do in this API is you have to make a get request to this URL and in return, it will return you this API. So let's go and make a code on the Apex class, how we can make the get request, how we can access the response and how we can format the response and put it on the UI. So to create the Apex class, let's take the control shift P here and select the option create Apex class. I am giving the name of the Apex class is LinkedIn integration. Okay, press enter. So in this class, what we will do is we will make a call to the uh, profile photo API of LinkedIn. So to do that, I am creating one method inside this. As I want this method to be get called from the Lightning Web component, I am making this method as an aura enabled, right? And uh, let me put the return type as a string, and I am making the method name here as get profile photo. Okay. So this method is not accepting any parameter. Let's go and make the HTTP call in this method. So to do that, I am first defining the HTTP instance is equal to new HTTP. I am also defining the HTTP request instance. So I am putting here 
HTTP request is equal to new HTTP request. So in the request, we have to also define few parameters. So first parameter that I am putting here the end uh, endpoint. So let's say I am putting here the set endpoint. So what will be the endpoint? Again, if I go to the LinkedIn here, as we have to make a call to this API, so this is the endpoint. So I'm just getting copied from here and putting it here for my reference. So this is the endpoint that we have to call. Okay, we have already taken this part in our name credential. So what we have to do here is here we have to use the name credential to, for that. I am putting here the callout and our name credential name. So to get the name credential name again, I will go back to my environment. I am navigating here and taking my name credential name. This is LinkedIn name credential. So let me take this one here. Putting here the LinkedIn name credential, right? Followed by that, whatever the API of the URL, I am just copying it from here and putting it. So in my name credential, I already have this much. So I am taking forward from the slash. Let me take it from here and take it till end. And this is the end point that I have to make a call. Right. Another thing that I also got from this here is the method by which we have to invoke. So I'm also setting the method here as the get method. So let me go and set the method here as get. Okay. So we have defined all the request parameters. What will be required as per the documentation? That is the endpoint as well as the method. Let's go and send this request. So I'm putting here send the request to send the request. I am using here the instance of HTTP and I'm using here the method called send and in this one I'm sending this request right to accept the response. I am putting here the HTTP response and using here the response like this. Let's go and check the response. What kind of response that we are getting after invoking this method. So so I'm ch checking the response here with the help of status code. So I am using here the response status code. Whenever the status code of the response is 200, we'll assume that we are getting the successful response. In case the response code is not 200, then we will make sure that it is a bad response. So let me put here the system dot debug. And I'm putting here the response received successfully. Right. So this is the response that we have received and I am printing this response here. Response dot get body. Now in case we are the integration goes fail, then I am also printing the log here with the error message. So I am putting here the same thing. Right. And here I am just changing the error message as response failure. Okay, so what we are expecting in the case of successful response, we are expecting the response, whatever they have put in the documentation. So if you see here in the documentation, they have put that in case of successful response, we can expect this JSON object from the LinkedIn, right? In this JSON object, in the identifier section, we do have the profile URL. So first, before we go and parse this JSON, what we will make sure is we are getting the successful response. So let's go and deploy this. So here deployment is failing. So for that, I am putting the return type here as void and uh, let's go and deploy this again. So our code is deployed successfully. Let's go to the org and do some testing whether we are getting the successful response or not. So I am navigating to my org. Let me open the developer console to make this call. Let me close the existing tabs here and we'll make a call from the anonymous window. So I'm opening this anonymous window and making this call. So my class name here is LinkedIn integration. So let me put the class name followed by the dot and the method name that is the gate profile photo. So let's go and make this call and check. 
whether we are getting the successful response or not. If I go and check the logs, you can see that we are getting the successful response. That is, the request has been received successfully, and we are getting the successful response back from the LinkedIn. So we are getting this response in this form. Let me scroll to the left. So we are basically getting this response in this form. Now the next thing that we have to do here is we have to pass this response and extract the URL from this response. Again, to do that, let's go back to the VS Code and we will do it step by step. So here we'll be using the JSON class method that is the deserialize untyped. So basically this method, it will take the string as an input and it will return you the map as an output. So here I go and type that method that is JSON dot deserialize untype and here I am passing the JSON string I am passing the JSON string the string that we are getting from the LinkedIn right and as I said what it will return it will return the map so let's go and accept the response in the form of map so I am putting the map here the first parameter will be the string and the next parameter will be the object and I am putting here the name of this as the JSON result so whatever the response that we are getting i'm converting that response into the form of map by using this approach so let me comment out this we don't need this now because we already validated our solution so now again we have to also do one thing here we have to typecast it for typecasting again i am putting here the map right now on the first deserialize untype if i again Take this response what we will get we will get this profile picture as the key and this complete object as a value right now the next thing that we have to do here is we have to again pass this profile key picture and from there we have to get this uh, display image right next time we have to again pass it and from there we have to get the element again make sure that element here is an array now inside the array we have one element that is the identifier and from the identifier we have to get this profile picture so let's go back to the apex and perform the related operations to actually get this url so let me go back we already got the first object here so as i said here we what we are getting is the profile picture so let's move to the next line and here i am putting again the map string comma object and here I am putting the profile picture right and what from where we have to get this profile picture from this JSON result dot get and what value we have to pass here we have to pass the value as the profile picture because that is what we are getting here this profile picture so I am pasting this profile picture here Again, it is returning a map. We have to perform the same type casting here as well. You can see that I am doing kind of a repeated step, but for the different element. Initially, we have passed the complete body and we got the object where key was the profile picture and the remaining body was the value, right? Now here, I again pass this key as a profile picture and now we will get the display image element where this display image element will be the key and this complete thing will be the value. Right, basically we get two keys here, this key and this key, but again we are not interested in this key because our identifier is present inside this object. So I am looking for this display image key. So let's go and take that display image key as well. So, okay, let me check if we do have something here. Okay, the semicolon was missing. That's why we are getting that error, but that's fine. So let me go and put here a map again. I am putting a string comma object and I am putting here the display image is equal to again I am putting the profile picture dot get and what value we have to get now again if I go back to my JSON we have to get this display image so I am copying this display image from here let me zoom this a bit I am copying this display image from here and putting it here right so we got this map now inside this display image what we will get now we will get this array where element will be the array so basically we are getting a list of 
map here right if you go and check here here we are getting the list because this is an array in the apex term we refer them as a list right and in the list we do have the map so where this will be the key and this will be the value similarly this will be the key and this will be the value so what we have to do here is we have to go and define a data type as the list of map and inside that we will go and iterate over the different elements so let's go and define the list of map here so again i am putting an enter and this time i am defining the list of map so let me put here list of map where again the key will be the string and another thing will be the object right i have defined here the list of map and i am naming this as a let's say elements and what let me go and first define this so here i am putting the new list of map like this now what we have to do here is we have to go and get the first element of the map again because here it's an array so there will be multiple elements right you can see it's an array so there will be multiple elements and for each array what we do have we do have the display size the way this uh, kind of an api works is in the first element we do have the very limited pixel image size in the second element we do have the maximum element image size so for this example to get the better picture quality i am directly taking the fourth element here to get the picture better picture quality i am taking the fourth element here so what i will be doing here is kindly play attention here so first i will go and iterate over this array and add the element inside this array so for that i am using the for let's say object instance of list of object right and which object we have to iterate here we have to iterate here this display image because here we only we have stored this information so and from here i am getting the elements so again let me go back and get the element name this is the elements and i am putting that elements here right and after that what we have to do here is in this element array that we have defined in this we have to go and put the different values so okay sorry here as we are doing the type testing we have to put this inside the bracket so let me put this inside the bracket and in this element we will go and add the map instance so here i am putting the elements dot add and what i am doing here in this map is i am adding the instance this instance that i am iterating i am adding that instance but again this instance will be of what type it will be of type map string comma object so here i am again type casting it by saying that this instance will be of type map comma object right and here i am putting a colon as i said to get the better picture quality here i will be interested in the fourth uh, fourth element of array right again there will be multiple elements of the array you can also try it out with the element 1 element 2 element 3 for the better picture quality as per my past experience i should i believe we should get the element 3 because in total there are four different elements inside this so what i am doing here is to store the elements again i am using the map putting a string comma object right and i am naming this as a identifier map because i am interested in the identifier now because in the identifier itself i do have the image image uh, image url and here i am putting the elements of 3 basically array always starts with the zero to get the fourth element i am putting here the value as 3 right definitely you can try with 0 1 and 2 as well only thing that will matter here is the image size that you will be getting from the linkedin linkedin api will share the images in the different sizes so it's up to you what kind of image size that you want to take it for that here i am using the element 3 if i'm putting here if you want you can take element 0 1 comma 2 anything okay so let's go and iterate over this identifier map as well because after this element 3 what we are getting here is we are getting this identifier now again in this identifier we do have the same situation like we do have the elements here also we do have an array and inside the array we do have the map so let's go and define another uh, variable 
in which we first create the list of map and again we will iterate over it and get the actual identifier basically we are interested in this identifier so only limited call is uh, pending now so let's go and iterate over it and get that value so again i am putting the list of map string comma object i am writing repeating the same logic that we have written uh, here to get the elements and here i am putting the let's say identifier list is equal to again i am defining the variable new list of map of object now again we will go and populate the identifier list by iterating over this identifier map so for that again i am using the for object instance and here again i am putting that whenever you are iterating over the list of object right again it's a type casting that we are doing here so let me put this in the bracket and what we have to iterate here we have to iterate over this identifier map and from this identifier map what we have to get here is the identifier so if again if i go to the documentation this is the value that we have to get now identifiers so here i will go and put the identifiers so let me go and add the values in the identifier list so in the identifier list again i am adding the different values so here i go and put the add of instance again we have to typecast the instance so let me go and typecast this instance as the map of object if you go over this recording multiple times definitely you will understand what i am doing in the first go it will be a bit challenging let me repeat one more time initially we have checked the response code as 200 after we got the response code as 200 i have put the body and i am using here the deserialize untype method to get the complete body and i am storing this into the json result after having the json what again my json will always be in the value of key and pair so here first i am passing the key as profile picture right again if i let me go and put this side by side so that you guys can understand in a much better way right so initially if you see here i am passing this profile picture and this will be my key and i will get a complete value here next time i am passing this display image and i am getting this as a complete value right next time i am passing this as an element and i am getting here the list of map because here it's an array so i am getting the list of map where this will be the different values now from here i have to go and accept the identifier which is again nothing but the list of map right so that's the logic that i have applied here now i got this identifier list now from this identifier list what we have to do here is we have to go and get the identifier record so let's make it very simple i am putting here the map of string comma object and i am putting here the identifier uh, image record map okay and from here now i will go and access that map so my map will be available in the identifier list so here i go and put the identifier list of zero from the map we all know it's very easy to get the value so what i have to do here is from this identifier map now i am using the get method and in the get method i am using this finally identifier to get my actual identifier so here i go and put this identifier here right and i'm storing this into the string so let me go and put the string here as the profile picture url like this right only this part is tricky but it's kind of a quite repeated if you at least go and type the code and try to put the multiple debug statement and try to understand it you will definitely get it still you do have any question you can definitely use the comment section and ask me as many questions as you do have okay i'll be happy to answer that that's fine now here this is the string that we are finally getting let's go and return this string uh, as a part of final output so what we will do now here is we will go and return this profile picture url i am also printing this profile picture url in the debug log as well 
so in case we have to go and troubleshoot it will be very easy for us for troubleshooting so i am putting here the profile picture url and also i am returning this profile picture url to my lwc and here also i am putting the return statement in case all goes good then i want to return the uh, either i should return null or i should return the blank it's one and the same thing let me return the blank here and let me change the data type of this method to string now so again a quick summary we have created this method after that i have defined the instances here after that what i have done here is i have put the request instance after that i have set the endpoint you will get this endpoint link in the video description i have set the method as get because here as per the documentation the method should be get after that i am sending the request and accepting the response here i am checking the status code whether the status code is 200 or not in case the status code is 200 we are successfully getting the response after that we are deserializing the body and storing the json result now one by one we are uh, taking care of the json result and getting the actual data initially we got the profile picture after sending the profile picture we got the display image after sending the display image we got the elements under the elements we do have the array of uh, identifiers right so i am getting here the array of identifiers and after that under the identifier we do have this identifier finally so i am able to access this identifier let me go and deploy this before i go and deploy this i want this method to be called from the wire decorator so i am putting here the cacheable equal to true cacheable equal to true right let's go and deploy this method parallelly when this method is deploying let's go and also create our lwc component so here i go okay we got some errors here so first error that we are getting in line number 23 that is the illegal assignment from object to string comma object so let me scroll down and check what is the exact error okay here we missed to typecast it so we have to go and typecast it here so let me go and typecast this so this is good what is the another error in line number 35 that we are getting here is uh, illegal assignment from object to string basically here we are storing the value in the form of string so here also we have to make sure we are typecasting it so i am putting here the string as well and let me go and deploy this one more time okay so meanwhile it is deploying let's go and create the lightning web component here so here i am putting the again taking the control shift p taking the option here create lightning web component and giving the component name as display user profile okay so this is the lightning component that i am creating in this component i want to make a call to the apex class that we have created uh, that is nothing but the linkedin integration this is the apex class that we have created so i want to make a call to this class with the help of wire decorator so here first i go and import the wire decorator here another thing that i will do in this class is I will go and import the apex method that we have created so i am putting the import the method name here is get profile photo so i am putting here the get profile photo and importing it from the salesforce slash apex from linkedin integration dot get profile photo now the next thing that i have to do here is i have to go and make a call to this method for that i am using the wire decorator here and i am making a call to this get profile photo function this function it will return us a profile url so for to access that i am using the function here and let me put here the profile uh, method it will accept one object that we are destructuring into the data and the error let me go and log both the details here so here i go and check if we are getting the data so i will go and log the data console.log and i am putting here a data else if i am logging the error here so let me go and log the error also i will store this both these details into the variable so let me go and define the two variables here profile uh, address and i am initializing with the blank and another one is the profile uh, address error and i'm also initializing this with the blank in case of successful response we will populate this this dot profile address with the data right and we'll make the error field as a blank so 
profile address error as null similarly in the case of error i am making that this dot profile address error is equal to error and the this dot uh, profile address as null now along with the profile image i also wants to show the user related data as well so what i will do for that i will use the sales i will first i will get the salesforce user id logged in user sales, logged in user salesforce id and after that i will use the get record wire adapter to get the logged in user details so first let's go and get the logged in user id here so i am putting the import id from let me put here the salesforce slash user slash id okay and along with that i have to also get the user related details so i am importing those fields as well let's add to get the name so i am putting here the name field and that i am getting from the user object so i am putting here the salesforce slash schema slash user dot name so i want to get the name and similarly i also want to get the email so i am putting here the email field and i am putting here the field name as email here we have to make sure that we are putting the api name this name can be the alias and can be anything now here i want to make a call to the get record function to get these details so i am using here the wire and here i am putting the get record as soon as i select the get record you can see that this method is imported here in case the intellisense is not working for you make sure that you are importing the get record here this method it will take two parameter first parameter is the record id in which you have to pass the id that you have imported so i am passing that id here another thing that you have to pass here is the fields that you want to retrieve so for example here is the list of fields that i want to retrieve from this method so i am putting here the fields and these are the different fields that first is the name field and second one is the email field okay and again to store these details or to handle the wire response i am using a function let's say i am putting the function as current user info and this function again it will take one object that we are destructuring into data comma error again we will check if we are getting the data then we will process the whatever the fields that get record is returning else we will log the error here so here i go and log the error first console dot log user info field and here i am putting the error message now to get the uh, to get this name field and the email field i am using another uh, object wire adapter here that is the sorry record wire adapter here that is the get field value so and we'll store this value the name field and the email field into two separate variable so first let me go and define these two different variable first i am putting here as a username and second i am putting here as the user email so let me go and store this username here this dot username is equal to i am using here the function called get field value as again i am as soon as i am using the get field value get field value is imported here in case it is not importing for you make sure that you are typing it manually and here you have to pass the two parameter first parameter is the actual data and second parameter is the field name that you have to retrieve so firstly i am retrieving the name so i am passing here the name field similarly next time i have to retrieve the email so i am passing the email field here here i miss to put the if so i am putting the if here else if error okay sounds good so we are getting here the username as well as the user email i believe our javascript job is done we got the profile photo also we got the user related details as well now the next thing that we have to do here is we have to go and design the html file uh, to display the profile image as well as the user related info for that i am navigating to the C, to the w3 schools and from here i am taking this flip card right this flip on this flip card first we will put the photo or on the back side we will go and put the user related information 
So let's go and copy this from here. So I'm copying the HTML file from here and putting it here. Also, we have to put the CSS file for that. Firstly, I will go and create the CSS file here. So inside this, I am creating the CSS file. While creating the CSS file, we have to make sure that the name of the CSS file is same as the component name. And inside this CSS file, I will copy the exact CSS what is available on the W3 schools. So here I go and print the exact CSS from here. Right. Let's go and first check the HTML, whatever we have copied here. Again, all these are the different classes that we have already defined from the W3 schools. Only thing that we have to change here is this image section. And then rather than the outer, we have to show the LinkedIn profile image that we have received that we have already stored in this variable called profile address. Right. So here I am passing that address to show the image. Another thing that we have to show here is the user related details on the flip side where I have to show the username as well as the email that we have again stored in the two separate variables. First is the username. So here I go and put the username. And another thing that I am putting here is the user email. Right now to format this, let me also add the SLDS classes. So I am putting the SLDS class, SLDS text heading and I'm making the heading for this as a large and let me also go and add the SLDS class here SLDS mm, text heading and I'm heading the heading this one as the medium right so our HTML file is also ready with the profile details and with the user card details that we have to show let's go and expose this component to the app builder for that I'm navigating to the XML file putting the is exposed as true and defining the targets here as the app page. Right. Let's go and deploy this and we will check the output now. So here I'm clicking on the deploy button. Now you can see our component has been deployed successfully. So let's go back to the org and add this component on the app page. So here I'll be going to my org adding this component on the app page, taking the option of edit page. And we'll drag and drop the component on the app builder. So let me go back, scroll down. So this is the component that we have created. I'm dragging and dropping this component here. Let me go and save this page and we'll go back. You can see here my component is loading the image and if I hover over it at the back side, I can have my user related details as well. You can also go and validate the image is same as my LinkedIn image here. So if I navigate to the LinkedIn. You can see that this image and the image that I am putting here is exactly same. So that's all from my side folks for this quick take. For such kind of videos, make sure that you are subscribing my YouTube channel Tech Journey with Ankit. Thank you. Have a good day.